what's going on YouTube and welcome to another Season 7 Champion Guide. Today I'm going to be covering Jungle Zack, the secret weapon. I was made for this. Literally. So why exactly would you pick Zack? Well, he's got amazing engage, pretty decent damage which is both AP and AoE making him a really solid pick in an AD heavy team, and he's also very, very tanky. He's got really solid built-in sustain and a very fast jungle clear because of his AoE kit. Last of course is his very solid ganks. He's got a really solid gap closer from his E ability and some really solid CC as well from both that ability and of course his slows and the knockup that comes from his ultimate. Zac, however is a very skill shot reliant champion because you do need to be landing your E ability on the enemy champions when you're going in for ganks and of course your Q has to be landed as well so it does provide it slow. Since Zack is a champion who really abuses his strong healing, Grievous Wounds is also a very strong pick against him, and he's also a weak duelist early on. Now he is somewhat safe against invading junglers since he does have his E ability to jump over walls, but really mobile champions like Lee Sin and Shaco can usually follow him over the walls and get some easy kills. Regardless of these cons, he's still a really strong pick right now because of his tankiness and of course his really strong ganks. For your masteries, you'll want to go 18 Resolve and 12 Ferocity, grabbing Courage of the Colossus as your mastery keystone. He can easily proc it from his E ability and his ultimate, and that shield makes him an even tankier champion. The rest of your masteries are pretty generic, but just make sure that you do take Runic Armor, because that plus healing really works well with his passive. As for alternatives, well, honestly, there's not really any. You'd want to take Courage of the Colossus in all situations. For your runes, you're going to want to go Magic Penetration Reds, Armor Yellows, Magic Resist Blues, and Ability Power Quints. This is my favorite setup because you'll do a lot of nice added damage with the Magic Penetration and the Ability Power, yet you're going to be a very tanky champion because of the Armor and the Magic Resist. If you're more worried about getting CDR cap, then you could always go for CDR Blues or Quints as well, but generally I like to go for this setup. For your Summoner spells, you pretty much have to grab Flash and Smite. Smite is of course required as a jungler since it will allow you to clear through the jungle, buy your jungler item, and secure Dragon and Baron. Your Smite can then also be used defensively when you do get your Stalker's Blade which will deal a nice extra chunk of damage and steal 20% of their movement speed making your ganks even more effective than they already were. Flash is then also required because it does give us another reliable escape which is great when you do combine it with your Elastic Slingshot. We can always use it as well to get into a better position in a fight so our Let's Bounce hits multiple targets. Your passive is Cell Division and it gives you some really really solid sustain and is a great defensive. Every time Zac damages at least one enemy with an ability and for every enemy champion beyond the first hit by Elastic Slingshot, he sheds a chunk of himself lasting for 6 seconds. Enemies can destroy them but Zac can also pick them up and restore 4% of his maximum health. Upon taking fatal damage, Zac splits into 4 uncontrollable Bloblets that move to his final location over 8-4 to four seconds. If any of these Bloblets remain at the end of the duration, Zack recombines and returns at 10-15% to 15 maximum health based on his Bloblets total health. So the first part is fantastic because your abilities do cost you your own health, and this will give you health in return, and will keep you sustained through the jungle. The second is also fantastic because simply it's a great way of just not dying. People can even teleport to your Bloblet so they can join a fight and make you immune. Your Q is Stretching Strike, and this is a decent range ability that also provides a slow. When activated, Zack punches out in the target direction, dealing magic damage to all enemies hit and slowing them for 2 seconds. This has a 50% AP ratio, costs you 4% of your current health, and has a range of 550. Although it is a pretty decent ability because it does slow the enemy, it's not as good as our W and E ability, so we have to max this one last. Just make sure that you take one early point in this skill so when you do jump into a fight, you can slow an enemy. Your W ability is Unstable Matter, and it's fantastic for its percentage target maximum health damage that's also AoE. When activated, Zack's body explodes outward, dealing magic damage to all nearby enemies, capped against minions and monsters, and becoming ghosted against monsters hit. Unstable Matter's cooldown is reduced by 1 second every time Zack picks up a Cell Division chunk. If he picks them up while Unstable Matter is available to cast, the next Unstable Matter has its cooldown reduced by the same amount instead. So this ability is fantastic because it deals targets maximum health damage, has only a 5 second cooldown, and a 350 range AoE. This is the ability you'll want to max second because of that scaling max health damage. In both ganks and teamfights, you'll basically just want to use this whenever the hell you can. Just make sure you're picking up your cell division chunks so you can lower the cooldown so you can use it more often, and of course get that health at the same time. Your E ability is Elastic Slingshot, and this is your really really solid initiation tool that also deals some pretty good damage. On first cast, Zack channels for a short duration, increasing Elastic Slingshot's range over a cone in the target direction. 
Moving during the channel automatically cancels it, refunding 50% of its cost and cooldown. On second cast, Zack dashes to the target location, dealing magic damage to all nearby enemies on impact and knocking them up for one second. So this is the ability we have to max first because the range goes from 1200 to 800 as you level it up, and the cooldown also goes from 24 to 12, losing 3 every time you put a point in it. Having multiple points in this ability can give you really really strong ganks because you can jump from a very long way away. This ability is of course your main way of jumping into a fight, as long as you can land it on the enemy champion they will be knocked up and your gank will be pretty effective. It's also great in the jungle because if you do get invaded you can use this to jump over walls and escape rather easily. Finally we arrive at your ultimate Let's Bounce which is great for its AoE damage, knock up, and slow. When activated Zack bounces 4 times gaining between 20 and 50% bonus movement speed as he does so but becoming unable to use basic attacks, stretching strike, or elastic slingshot. Each bounce deals magic damage to all nearby enemies, knocking them back for 1 second and subsequently slowing them by 20% for the same duration. Enemies can be damaged by multiple bounces for 50% damage, but won't be displaced. So in a teamfight this can be pretty devastating because it can do a lot of damage if hitting multiple targets and it will displace an entire team if they are clumped up. You can also save this in case somebody like a Malzahar does start channeling their ultimate, knock them up with this ability to instantly cancel it. In a team fight, this is great if you do want to dive onto the back line to knock them all up, and you can also peel relatively well as well if you do use this on the front line. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then first, you want to focus on maxing your E ability first since it does get increased leap range and a reduced cooldown, making your ganks much more effective. Then for its really strong AoE percent max health damage, we max our W second. Finally, that leaves our Q ability, although it is really nice and the slow does scale, it's just not as strong as our W and E ability, so we have to max it last, just take one early point at level 2 so you can slow your target. For your all-in combo, you'll first want to start by jumping onto the enemy with your E ability, and then hitting them with your W ability, Unstable Matter. At this point, you're going to want to activate your ultimate Let's Bounce, and activate Unstable Matter when you can, again. Keep in mind you'll want to try to pick up the Bloblet so you can reduce the cooldown on your W ability, but you'll want to prioritize knocking up more targets during your ultimate in my opinion. After your ultimate ends, hit the enemy with Stretching Strike and use your abilities as they come off cooldown. I will remember you. Will you remember me? Zack has a really good jungle clear and great jungle sustain, so you have the option of doing a full clear if you do want to. This will give you level 4 and your elastic slingshot will have an even longer range which will make your ganks even stronger. If you feel like you have a really weak lane then you can also rush level 3 and gank before most people ward. Try to identify a weak lane in the pregame and let your laner know if you intend on ganking so they'll have the proper ability. Of course you also have the option of invading a weak jungler since you can always use your elastic slingshot to escape if you do get caught in a bad situation. When going for a gank it's very simple, you want to use your elastic slingshot to jump onto the enemy, then slow them with your stretching strike, and then follow up with the rest of your damage. Your ganks will become even better when you have your let's bounce since you can add even more damage, apply another slow, and knock up a target. You should be looking to get a gank off every single time your let's bounce is off cooldown. As I previously mentioned you do have the option of ganking at level 3 or during a full clear and then ganking at level 4, it's up to you and it's up to personal preference. Your job in teamfights is to initiate with your elastic slingshot and disrupt the enemies as much as you can with let's bounce. You may want to save your let's bounce however for situations where you can cancel a channeled ultimate like Malzahar's or Warwick's so if you think you need to, save it for those situations. You also have the option of diving onto the enemy backline or peeling for your carries. This will completely depend on the type of team comp you're running. Generally I like to sit on the front line and peel but if you have another tank on the team and you have some divers as well then you may want to go onto the back line instead so you can hold them in place for your carries. Now let's look at a couple hard matchups and first up is Diana. She's a champion who can basically outduel you all game long and she does have multiple dashes so usually she can keep up to you. Whenever you try to elastic slingshot away she can simply pull you in and cancel it and just straight up destroy you. Try to avoid her as much as you can in 1v1 situations because I feel like you're a stronger champion in teamfights. Next here is Ivern who's an incredibly strong champion right now and honestly he brings even more teamfight utility than you do. In most situations you could probably 1v1 him but he's just going to run away with his kit. The one thing you have on Ivern is your superior mobility and gank so try to gank as often as you can and outmaneuver him. Next here we have Pantheon who's going to do an absolute ton of damage to you early on with his lethality build and his damn spears. If you try to jump away from him with your elastic slingshot, he's just going to cancel it with his W ability. 
His ganks are pretty decent if he does have his ultimate, but yours are much much better, so try to outmaneuver him and gank as much as you can. Last here we have Shaco, who's one of those champions that can easily invade you because of his high mobility and high damage. Against him you're going to have to play some defensive wards because if he catches you off guard when he invades, you're probably going to die. Sure you can jump over a wall with Elastic Slingshot, but he's just going to follow you with his deceit. You're a much better teamfighter than him, so play defensively and make it to those teamfights. Alright, for our last section we have our item build which starts with a refillable potion, Hunter's Talisman, and a warding totem. For your core build you want a Stalker's Blade enchanted with Cinder Hulk, a Spirit Visage, and a Randuin's Omen. If you instead had a very very tanky team and you wanted to add some more damage, then instead you could go for Runic Echoes. It's also a very viable buy, but personally I like to go for the Cinder Hulk whenever I can. It has a nice AoE burn and then the Spirit Visage gives you some magic resistant cooldown reduction with that plus healing on your Bloblets, and Randuin's is just a fantastic armor item. For your boot options, you can get Ionian Boots if you want CDR, Ninja Tabbies against high AD teams, and Merc Treads against high AP or CC teams. For your item pool, we first have Dead Man's Plate for its added mobility and armor and health, the Thorn Mail against high AD teams to reflect damage, and the Guardian Angel so you can get some armor and magic resist and also come back to life in case you do die. If your support didn't want to go for a locket, then you can always pick it up yourself because it does give you some nice magic resist and that AoE shield is great for your team. Another fantastic magic resist item would be the Abyssal Scepter, which does give you some nice magic resist and of course increases your damage as well, which is really solid on Zack. Warmogs is also a really solid item since it will increase your health pool and also give you 10% more CDR. Then finally is the Leandries, which adds some more damage as well, but also gives you some health, which makes you have a nice health pool. For my example full build though, I take that core build, get Aeonian Boots, then a Thorn Mail, and a Warmogs. You'll only have 30% CDR, but that is more than enough, and you will have an absolute ton of armor from the Thorn Mail and the Randuins, and some really nice magic resist as well from the Spirit Visage. You're also going to have an enormous health pool, and you're going to be really, really hard to bring down. But that, ladies and gentlemen, covers everything I've got for Jungle Zack in Season 7. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all my social medias, and of course my second YouTube channel and Discord server as well. This weekend I'm also going to be doing a 24 hour stream for the first time ever so the link to my Twitch channel will also be down there. But with all that covered, thank you guys so much for watching the video, if you guys did enjoy it please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one, take it easy, and peace.